209 in the first. And the kick is away. Wow. Pretty high kick. And let's see how this thing bounces. Oh, got a Wisconsin Whitewater bounce to the six. And they'll down it there. Boy, he really got under that one, didn't he? Yeah, great job. Two good punters out here tonight, both ways, department. huh? That's a, a big play there. And now you got to work all the way back in your own end zone if you're going shotgun almost on any play. Well, going into the win will be Morningside. And, again, it's not much of a win here tonight. It, uh, it was interesting when the flags came out with the color guard to start the game. It seemed like there was more wind at center field than there was from the flagpole on the east end of the stadium. That flagpole right now is uh, moderately yeah, blowing. It's not anything crazy. Yeah. And it is uh, going to be first down and 10 here with a long field to go. 93 yards from pay dirt for Morningside College, trailing 16-14. to 14. Kasdorf. We'll keep the football. Hard fought run up to the 13, 14 yard line. Kasdorf's taking some bangs in there tonight. Yeah, I was just going to say that time it was Sean Shilcox coming up from his safety spot, and he just gave a little hurt to Kasdorf that time. But he's not afraid to call his own number, and he hasn't been this year at all. He's a decent amount of rushes this year for Kasdorf. Got to admire a quarterback that's willing to. Go into the trenches. And now Morningside content to run some clock here. Probably going to try it. And now there's confusion. And Minute 25 and counting. Play right. clock is at eight seconds here for Morningside. Trailing by two to close down half number one. Snap, inside handoff. And that play was never really organized for Morningside. Yeah, from the start there, I don't know if everyone was on the same page for that one. It looked like a little confusion. Dvorak ended up being the ball carrier. And just like that, you're faced with a third and four. That's one thing about playing a, a team of either way. Uh, you get to third downs awful quickly. Good defensive units on both sides. 29 seconds. Good snap. Kick is away. It's carrying towards the 40. Fair caught there. Well, I don't know what kind of leg their kicker has, but uh, I know he has a couple of uh, field goals on the year. Seven for seven on PATs this year. Really the longest field goal has been 29 yards. This would be with the wind if they choose to do so, but you really need you need about 15 yards here to get into any manageable field goal position that, if you're Wisconsin Whitewater. no timeouts for Whitewater, so you'd have to use the edges of the field here. Or you just take some shots down the field. You got four tries. Try a little draw play or... Maybe you just run it and get into the locker room with the two-point lead. 22 seconds left. Here's the inside handoff. Pitch back. They're going to hit it and send it downfield, and it's going to be overthrown. Good job that time by the secondary. Staying with the receivers, not biting on the play fake. Maddox was the intended receiver there. Tried a little trickery. Morningside did not necessarily bite on that in the secondary. They did have man-for-man -man coverage over the middle. Stops the clock at 16 seconds. Back up to the line of scrimmage is uh, Wisconsin Whitewater with a two-point lead here tonight in Sioux City, 16 to 14. Both these teams, number one in the country. Holding the pocket, holding the pocket, and it will be incomplete. Well, Chris Nelson uh, stayed in there as long as he could. They've gotten some good licks on him. Well, they brought two linebackers off the right side that time. You thought maybe they'd drop all their backers back in coverage. You know they're probably going to try and take a shot downfield, but instead they decided to bring some heat and make Nelson a little bit uncomfortable. Third down and 10 from the 40-yard line for Wisconsin White. Amy's a senior, just shy of 200 pounds. Very athletic wide receiver. Nine-minute mark here of quarter number three. As Wisconsin Whitewater is just methodically working away at their first possession of uh, quarter number three. Morningside had to do a, a squib kick, a short punt to end their first possession of the second half. Dump pass. Room to go out there. Gamina, the big tight end who had the score back to start quarter number two. And he's just a big guy in the open field when he gets some uh, green in front of him. Nearly tipped there at the line of scrimmage, but... Then the block that really keyed the whole thing was offensive lineman Johnny Wiederholt out there, right there. Yeah. Opened up. 6'3", 238 at tight end. I'd call that a pretty good tight end. And you, you notice they line him up at fullback sometimes, yep. like not split out there. He's a load coming at you. 
Here we go with a second and short for Wisconsin Whitewater, and that'll be a first down. Takes the inside handoff. He'll roll out, looks to pass. There's the big guy again, and he'll be driven out of bounds. Actually, that is on the way, and it is good. That is a good, hard, strong kick there. And it is up, and it is through, and Wisconsin Whitewater adds to their lead. It's 19 to 14, 508 to go here in the third quarter. We're, that's going to bring up a third and long into a very intense wet wind here uh, out of the east at Olsen Stadium. Yeah, that was Tam set that time. Junior from Waterford, Wisconsin, 6'1", 275 pounds. And, again, he just almost came untouched there and a little stunt up the middle. It looked like it might have been a twist that time on the D-line. And now they're lining up with just three down linemen in this passing situation. There goes uh, Breyer in motion once again, rolling right. Dump pass, incomplete, intended for Cavan. Last time, Briar Evans, I meant to say Evans, uh, went in motion. That was the play where they uh, got a touchdown uh, that opened it up. But uh, that time, uh, nothing going on the pass, and it will be a morning side going into punt formation. Yeah, and, you know, all after our evening so far, the, the fronts have been a, at a pretty even battle. That offensive line has held their own for morning side, but that drive there, you really saw really have their way with that front five. For the Mustangs. Spencer Wyant will get this kick off. It's going to go right almost to midfield. Fair caught there just inside midfield at the 48 yard line. And that's where Wisconsin Whitewater will take over. First down and 10. Along with Lucas Mormon. Is that were, Maddox on the reception? Number seven. Lofts it up there. Uh, number nine. It's, uh, Joe Wirth. Wirth Hard Mr. to tell Reliable. on the far sideline here. I mean, that's a long ways away from where we are up here. But Joe Wirth, and uh, they covered a lot of ground on that pass. Worth one of the top receivers coming into the night. Five-yard line for Wisconsin Whitewater. Inside handoff, powering through, down to the two-yard line. See Ratliff back in there as the yep. ball squirts free, but again, whistles blue. Patterson Play was, was in there, but now Ratliff is back. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, just make space. Time. Oh, another, another helmet. Another helmet that time. This time it's... Uh, Sirkovich, I believe, that had to come out. 99, yep. the defensive end for Morningside. Trot off, get that thing fixed. All right, second and three from the three. 210 to go in the third. Full house backfield. There's the handoff. Ratliff powering, powering touchdown. Touchdown, Wisconsin Whitewater as they add on to their lead. That'll put it up to a score of 25 to 14 with a two minutes to go. In quarter number three, the PAT is upcoming. That's a big score for Wisconsin Whitewater. Yeah, you can push it here, you know, make it a uh, – open it up a little bit. So a touchdown and a field goal with the 11-point lead. Now they got that field goal early, which really, you know, at that time you're thinking, well, you know, they go up five, but, you know, they tack one on here. Now takes a two-point conversion and a field goal, and that doesn't even do it if they can make this PAT here. There's the they, hold, there's the kick, and it is up, and it is through. You know, they had a little issue with PAT. Had one blocked earlier, but got that one through. 26 to 14, two backers, and then it was into the secondary, and fortunate he didn't take that one to the house for another touchdown. First down and 10 from the 22-yard line, 13.49 to go. 13.39 to go here in quarter number four. Morningside looking to maybe send some, send some ends here. Checking off the play again is Chris Nelson for Wisconsin Whitewater. Hand off. Penalty flag come flying in there. Yes. There's a penalty flag on the play, a short gain on the play. See who this one goes on. Here's our call from our referee. Chop block on Wisconsin Whitewater. That is going to be a... Uh, And then we remain first down. That's the first time I believe that Whitewater has been. No, check that. They had. Second. No, they, they didn't have the delay of game. Here's the play. Ooh, right there, there it is. Definition of a chat block. Good first and 25 it. on the penalty from the 37 yard line for a Wisconsin Whitewater. Into. Heavy, heavy misting rain and the wind. 
Pass to the outside. That's only going to gain back the line, eh, a little more than the line of scrimmage as he'll be knocked out of bounds at the 18-yard line. Again, covered a lot of yardage on that pass. Well, the defensive the back kind of slipped and fell down. He was all alone, able to get up and force him out of bounds. But Joe Wirth on the reception. He's seen a majority of the passes tonight for the Warhawks. He came into the contest as their leading receiver. Second and four with 12.50 to go in the football game. Second and four from the 16-yard line. If you're a Morningside fan, especially if they can't hold them out of the end zone here, if they can hold them to a field goal here, then that clock's not necessarily as much of an enemy. Handoff on the outside. Ratliff looks to cut back, and he'll gain maybe a yard on the play to the 10 for Wisconsin Whitewater. That time a good job up front by that D-line. Really strung this play out, forced it to the sideline. A couple times tonight, the Morningside defense has bended but not broke and held Wisconsin Whitewater to field goals. And this would be a case, too, where a field goal uh, would be preferable as you're heading down to the 11-minute mark in the game. It's a 26-21 to 21 well, lead for Wisconsin Whitewater. Yeah, and a field goal, you know, with a two-point conversion, then if you get that touchdown, able to tie the game up. Single set backfield, shotgun formation. There's the inside handoff, kept the legs moving, and it will be third down and about seven to go here for Wisconsin Whitewater. Again, uh, just nothing fancy there, just an inside run. Well, all night, especially that second half, we knew they'd just try to come out and lean on you that entire half. Morningside still has that. all their timeouts left. Wisconsin Whitewater has used two timeouts here in the second half. That could be a factor as well down the stretch run here. 10-24 on the game clock. Play clock down to 14. Wisconsin Whitewater, third and eight from the nine yard line. They can get a first down. Say, watch a pass. Rolling here. left, pass to the end zone, and it is dropped in the back of the end zone. He had it. He was pretty oh. wide open. Uh, the the D backs were closing, but they were uh, there was a pretty good space there. Uh, looks like it was. Uh, it was Gunama. Yeah. Take a look here. He, Pretty well-thrown ball, too. He put it where only his receiver was going to be able to make the catch. He hangs on. I think they give him that catch. He does get the one foot down, but good close there on the defense that time. Derek Dyson, who's Dyson. a very strong defensive. In terms of the field conditions, in terms of the weather environment, I should say. Again, the field conditions, not as bad. Here's the pass over the middle, and that's going to be complete for first down yardage as it looks like they'll give him one yard past the first down marker. On a nice pass over the middle. Was that Niles? Yes, Niles Connor again. Niles again. Good job to hang on to that football because right in his hip pocket that time was Vince Mason, the junior from Green Bay, Wisconsin, for Whitewater. Here is the shotgun formation once again for Morningside College. Cavan to the outside. Going to gain a couple past the 25-yard line where it will bring up second down and about eight or seven to go. Welcome to ESPN3's coverage from Sioux City, Iowa tonight, along with Lucas Mormon. I'm Corey Westra with you for uh, number one and number one, Division Three number one and NAIA number one. And uh, I guess uh, we couldn't have dialed up a better matchup before the game, and we couldn't dial up what looks to be a better finish for the football game as well. Second down and seven at nine minutes to go. Could have dialed up better weather, though. Here's the near side pass to Connor Niles, 25 to the 30, and he is going to have yardage... Uh, very Probably close. short of the first down, but not by much. But good defensive closeout there by Whitewater. That looks like uh, that was uh, Mooring uh, in on the closeout. And you can see how much it takes for uh, Kasdorf just to get the football out there to Niles again in these conditions. Looking at the spot here. Agador looks at it, and he's going to bring the chains in. He's going to call for a measurement. Timeout called. And they're going to have to come all the way over the field, <laughs> this side of the field, for the measurement. I'm going to go with minutes compared. There was a stretch there where it was really dumping buckets. Three and one, third and one. Kasdorf goes into the pile. First down yardage. And that's all you need, just a fresh set of chains for Morningside. They can keep working their offense here. Nothing too, uh, nothing too risky. But even a third and short against that D line is an adventure. Well, you well, think, think of some of the factors here is now the flags unfurled itself out there in the end zone. But, you know, they got the wind at their back here in this half. So if it later in the game comes down to some sort of field goal, you at least have that benefit and punting it away here if you need to flip the field quickly. 
from the shotgun, Ryan Kasdor, first and 10 from the 33-yard line. Fresh set of downs, and who yeah. jumped? Well, this will be one to, I think we'll have to see. Morningside rocked back in there. Offense number 66 jumped on that one, so that is Morningside. And I think it was more than maybe more than just <laughs> 66. That, that right side kind of rocked back in, in their stance just a little bit. So they'll go with a new formation on the first and 15. Trips to the left, single receiver near side down on the 26-yard line for Morningside. Single set back, backfield. Kasdorf, and he'll hand it off, trying to spread the defense out a little bit, and Kavan has nothing going there. Whitewater says, well, we got the ball, but I would think it would play was long over. He came up with the ball, but either way, he made a great play there. Tim Reagan. Yeah, he pulled it out very late in the play. Good pursuit by Wisconsin Whitewater to shut the play down. Brings up second down and 17. This becomes a pretty big down. Well, that penalty really hurts now where you back it up on first down and you lose on second down. You're, you're just in a tough spot here. You only have so many plays in your playbook for these situations. Kasdorf for Morningside stands on his 20. Looking downfield. Passer on offense. Down for the first time in tonight's football game. Have held leads as big as 10 twice. Pass to the right side and complete a gain of eight on the play on the far sideline. They don't run a lot of pass plays, but when they do, Joe Worth usually seems to be the one making the catch. And it seems like it's the same play every time. Joe Worth, uh, Mr. Reliable out there, his sixth reception of the game. He's got about 65 yards or so uh, receiving for Wisconsin Whitewater. Second and three from the 23, 622 to go in the game. Again from the shotgun, Chris Nelson for Wisconsin Whitewater. And that pass was knocked. Is that a live ball? Is that a live ball? And it was recovered by Morningside if it is. Randy Hagedorn has thrown the beanbag down on the 16-yard line, and that means that is a live ball. That must have been a fumble. Let's see the replay. Was it at one of those? Did it go out the back of his hand? Yep, it right sure there. Did. Wet football. Wet football, <laughs> definitely on that one. And that is a fumble in the red zone for Morningside College. Look at right there. Just never had the handle on the football. Nice camera work, guys. 19 yard line recovered there at about the 17. And Morningside can uh, knock on the door here with 6 11 to go in the contest. Yeah. Well, turnover again. Uh, I saw it in the first half. We're seeing it in the second so half. In the first half, they went against Morningside. They had a couple costly turnovers, some errant snaps. And in this half, this time, the big turnover here late in the fourth quarter. First and 10 for the Mustangs from the 17-yard line. Morningside up by one, 27 to 26. Wind at their back going towards the west. End zone here at Olsen Stadium. Kasdorf under center. We've got a flag a on the play. Delay a game. Play clock has run out. Pretty quick, uh, had a couple times from where they were. They were at the 17-yard line to start this possession after the fumble. And for Wisconsin Whitewater, that was their second turnover of the game, I do believe. Passing play over the middle. Ooh, Connor Niles just got knocked up the chin. I'll see a replay well, on that one. I don't over think the middle, you're going to get hit sometimes. Yeah, and I think people are wondering if that was a helmet to helmet. I do not think it was. It looks like he, he maybe caught it up in the chops. He's going to make a play. He was going to make the play. He was coming underneath his arms. I don't think he, his intent was to go for his face. I don't, I don't know if we've got the so. other angle I on that, that one. They, you know, Here's he, another angle on it. He, there, he wasn't a defenseless player necessarily at that point, and he didn't leave Oof. his feet. It just it looks Gips. really bad. Connor Niles, is he the one that actually has gone down here on the near side hash mark? I wonder if that's one where he got up and then realized his bell was rung. Yep, that's Connor up under yeah. his own power You know, here. you see that a lot, Lucas. They get up from the play. They act like they're fine. They go about five, seven yards, and all of a sudden, then it kind of hits that, oh, wait a minute, what just happened? Cobwebs were knocked loose on that one. I, I, I think it was a good interpretation there that they did not throw the flag on that one. I mean, you're going to go over the middle. You're going to catch some catch some contact now and then. He wasn't airborne. He wasn't defenseless. He didn't, the defender did not launch himself. He did not lead with the helmet and it was just a good football play, good collision, and we play on second and long. 
Kasdorf under center, trying to gain some yards back with his feet. Please Not sack. much there. He is brought down at the 32-yard line, and it'll be third and long now for Morningside College. And now you got to think about even that field goal. Yep. you got to get it back in your field goal range here because if you put this one down right now, you're looking at around a 47-yarder. Beat you. All right. Lining up for the field goal. Kick is on its way, and it is good. Morningside has extended the lead to 30-26 to with 4.19 to go in the ballgame. Nice kick there on the play by the Mustangs, and Mighty Mo has shift Mustangs there uh, to extend the lead, as you alluded to, Lucas, that a field goal cannot beat you. Uh, at this point uh, in the ball game, and that comes with 419. But you also made another comment to me off air. There's a lot of time left. There is a lot of time left, a lot of time to work with. But don't forget, Wisconsin Whitewater had to burn two timeouts early when Morningside kind of had them on the ropes and a little bit in the middle of the third quarter. So just one timeout to work with. Here's the passing play over midfield, and it is going to be caught by Mr. Worth, I believe. Yep. And there were no, two. that's not worth, is it? No, not that. That is time. Carpella. And, man, good coverage, but they just went right back up, got the plan. We They'll, just had some interesting information yeah, handed we'll, to us by uh, the Division Three football uh, website coordinator. What does that say? Last time that Wisconsin Whitewater was trailed in the fourth quarter of a regular season game back in 2013 against Wisconsin Oshkosh. They did Pat, come back to win 17-14. Pat Coleman with Division Three football for that tidbit. Thank you, Pat, for that. And, uh, yeah, well, you don't win 34 games in a row for nothing, I don't think. Bouncing outside and another hard run by Ratliff. And that will be the end of that play. Ratliff. Again. Ralph is fired up after. He, he doesn't like that when the play goes beyond the whistle. Running. He just no. wants to keep going. He doesn't want to stop running, but he also doesn't want it to get feisty at the end either, and it's just kind of a battle of wills when the play is over. Good solid run again by Ratliff, though. I mean, he is just a beast to bring down. Morningside got a handful of jersey there at the end of the play, but uh, it is now 35-yard uh, line, second and two, 314 to go, 30 to 26 in favor of Morningside. Whitewater driving, driving down the field here, far side hash, inside run, and it will be a short gain on the play, and it looks like that should be enough for a first down. Into the wind, trailing by four. Rolling left. Pass complete at the 22-yard line. That is to Maddox. Very close, yes, first down. Actually, four. Marcus Hudson, if two number sevens, that'd be Marcus Hudson, the junior, at 208 pounds, and that's a fresh set of downs for Whitewater. 227 on the clock here. Just a, they run that same pass play to both sidelines. They've had luck with it. They, like I said, they don't get flashy in the passing department. They, they have... Three, four routes that they like. They use it, and they're good at it. They complete it. Possession-type routes. 2.09 and rolling here in the ball game from the shotgun. Pass over the middle is complete to the big tight end once again. Brent Campbell that time. He's 258 and 6'5". Him and 6'3", 238-pound Gumina are big tight ends for Whitewater. And Nelson stood in there that time against some pressure. Took a shot at the end. First and goal from the eight-yard line with a minute 50 to go. And check that. That wasn't Larson. That time, well, yeah, that's it was. Single back, single set backfield here for Wisconsin Whitewater. Minute 35 and counting here. Going to the... Play clock think running down. I think they might have had another delay of nope, game. Ball start. Five-yard penalty on that one. Still first and goal, but that'll make it a first and 13 for Whitewater. Ball on the 13-yard line. 90 seconds left. Now you, you got that field goal real important now because now yep. they got to play for a touchdown. So this is four-down territory all the way. To go. No, as, we, as they kicked off and Whitewater took the ball there, we said, 
there might be too much time left here. You got the lead, but now you got to have your defense bow up, get a stop. They aren't able to hold them out. So now they almost have to, you know, they're going to kick the field goal here, yep. or the PAT, so only a field goal will tie it instead of beat you. 32 to 30, going for the PAT is Wisconsin Whitewater. Ben Franzen is on at the 10 yard line. Kick is up, and the kick will be good. We'll be back with the kick after this as Whitewater takes.